Hello, welcome to the training for public access and CMIS aimed at town and parish clerks within the East Suffolk Council area. I'm Catherine Scott, I'm a principal planner in our development management team. Um, that team includes both development management who deal with the planning applications and our planning enforcement team. Today, um, I'm going to outline and try and cover the following points. Um, I'll explain where to find general information and guidance for town and parish councils on our website. I'll explain how to load properly access and how to log in, how to search for applications in more than one way, how to create a saved search, which means that you can register to receive notifications of application outcomes how you can access key dates and information on each application and the plans and documents on those applications. I'll also cover how to submit comments on application and include some tips on what it's useful to cover and include in those comments to help us understand the views of the town council or the parish council when we come to determine the application or when the matter goes to the referral panel. I will then move on to the CMIS system, which is the notification alert system for planning committee. Um, and I'll show you where to find committee reports and things on our website at that stage as well. In terms of questions, I will try and cover answers to the questions that were raised during the live session during and as part of the presentation. So first of all, we'll go to the website. So this is the East Suffolk Council website. You'll see that there are a number of tiles um, for different areas within the authority. Um, first of all, we're going to go into your council. So if you, so if you click on the tile, and then we're looking for Town and Parish Council information. So if we go into Town and Parish Councils, and on this page, there's a link to details about clerks. So it's contact details, really. Um, and then we've got the various presentations from and information from our parish and council forum, uh, town council forums. Um, we've also got guidance on how to re register for a public access account. And then public access guidance for town and parish clerks, which is the guide that was circulated a few weeks ago. There has been a slight update to that and it is the updated version that's on the website. The update relates to accessing your in-tray. Um, the system hasn't changed, it's just it, it needed updating in the guidance, um, but I will show you that a bit later in the, the presentation. Okay, so what we're going to do is we go back to the home page and we're now going to into public access. So then we click on planning and we're looking for planning applications. So we click on planning applications. And we would then go into view and comment on a planning application. However, while we're at this page, I'll just highlight some of these other boxes. We've obviously got links through to finding out information about whether permission is required, how to submit applications and planning application process, and then our planning enforcement team. If we just click on one of these, um, so this one has then got links onto further information about permitted rent rights and vertement consent. There's also a link to contact us, which will load a page that's got various contact details for the various teams within the planning services, um, including contact details in terms of email address and phone number. If you scroll towards the bottom of that page, there's information on the duty planner and then our development management team. In the bottom paragraph of the section on development management, we've got a link to a map of the district, which shows the three geographical areas we split teams into. So we've got a north, central and south. Um, and we've got contact details, so we've got names and phone numbers for all of the officers in each of those teams. In addition to the three geographical teams, we've also got the team that I manage, which is the enforcement technical and district wide general management team. So we do cover the whole district between us. And then the major projects team also covers the whole district between them and they deal with the, the really big 
major project applications for large housing schemes primarily. So if we go back to the page with the information about development management, next to the map, there's also a link to an alphabetical list of parishes. So this list has got each parish listed alphabetically. It's got a link, well, basically tells you which area team it's in, which planning committee area it's in, because they don't necessarily match the team areas, and which local plan area they're in. And if that town or parish has got a neighbourhood plan that's made, which means it's adopted, it's been through its development and referendum and then been made, um, it's, there's a link added into this column. I will update this link this list as and when neighbor, more neighbourhood plans get made and I will also update this and the map if we have any staff changes. If you click on um, the area team it then jumps to the list with details of, of the, the officers in that team and their numbers so if you know you're in that team you know your officers the officer dealing with application type to be one of these but I will show you specifically how you can find out the specific officer for a particular application once we get into public access. Right, so we'll go back to the public access system. So we will go back to the home page and I'll show you from there again. We go to planning, planning applications and planning enforcement, and then view and comment on a planning application. This page has some general advice on the public access system. It's also got a link through to a page that provides guidance on commenting on a planning application, including guidance on what is a material consideration, so what we can consider. And it has some examples of things that we can't consider, so they're matters that ideally shouldn't be in comments. Um, but if they are made, we have to set them aside. We, we can't consider those elements of the comments. We can only consider the local plan policies, the national policies, neighbourhood plan policies, and then material plan considerations, including supplementary planning guidance. There's also guidance on the planning application process, and that page details in text form the different stages of planning application. There's also a link on that page through to a PDF, which has a, a flowchart um, explaining the process. But the purpose of today is really for public access, so we're going to that system. It will always load a simple search page. You can search from this page for a particular application, if, particularly if you know the, the reference number or the first line of the address. Um, but as parish and town clerks, I would recommend that you log in because then you get there's more functionality once you've logged in. Um, if you haven't got an account, you can register. Um, if you consult the guide that we referred to earlier on the, the page with information for town and parish clerks um, and use those steps. So first of all, we're going to log in. Once you've logged in, it will automatically appear on your in tray. So this is all the applications you've been consulted on um, and it details like, the number of days until the consultation period expires. Um, if there's one of these that your town or parish council has already looked at and you want to submit comments, you can just click on the, the blue box and a box will appear. Um, that you can also, but you can also access it once you've loaded the application via the search function. Um, and I will come on to how to submit those comments and some tips on comments at that stage. Um, you can, yeah, there's more than one page here, so you can click through. Um, in terms of your profile, You'll see this is if you click up here, you can then see your intro. So if you need to come back to this page, profile details, 
is what you'd imagine is your, your contact details and things. Saved searches are searches that you've set up for particular criteria. Um, and once they're set up and provided you've ticked a box, it will then email you updates and notify you when there's a change on the application. So when we determine the application, you're sorry, when we determine the application, you will then get a notification of the outcome. So if we go to the search function, we can, we've got the simple search we had when we initially loaded. There's an advanced search and then there's these other searches. There's a map search which is quite useful as well, which we'll come back to. Um, for the moment, we'll just look at the advanced search. This is useful for setting up a saved search. You can complete as many of these boxes as you want, but I would recommend as parish and town clerks, you just set it to the parish that you're dealing with, and that way you just get notifications of applications in that parish. If you um, wanted to know about a neighbouring parish, you could set up a second saved search. Um, or if you wanted your parish and, and those others that are within the ward, the, the East Suffolk Council member ward, you could use the ward. Um, but as I said, I'd, I'd recommend that you just use parish. So in this case, we'll click Oldborough because it's just, just because it's top of the list. Um, and then you need to enter a date range so that otherwise you you'll get everything from all time. Um, just put in a date in the valid from box because then it means it's open indefinitely and it will continue to run as and when we receive new applications. Um, I would recommend you have a date validated of at least two or three months ago because we have, because of the target times on applications, we have 13 weeks set by a government target for major applications. So that's a anything over 10 dwellings and then minors and others so that's nine dwellings or less um less than a thousand square meters of commercial floor space and things like household extensions we get we get eight weeks set by the government target so in order to get the decision notices for those that might have been received and not yet determined till about that date you probably need at least three months there may be some applications that have been around a little bit longer, so you may want to set it earlier. Um, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to set it up from January this year. So you just type the date in, leave this box blank so that it will run indefinitely. And then click search. And then you'll see you get a series of applications. Some of these will be ones that have already been determined because it brings up everything that was valid after that date in the, that particular town or parish. Um, but it will have the, the most recent ones at the beginning of the list and you can just click through. Um, in order to save that search, if you click on the thing that looks like an old floppy disk. And then make sure that you click yes to notify via email about your new search results. That is the trigger that means that you then get notified when applications are determined via the public access system. If you then click save, you'll end up as a saved search. This can just sit there behind the scenes and it will send you the notifications. Um, if you to find it's not working and you want a slightly different area, you can go in and edit it. Um, if you delete it, you will no longer receive the notifications. So once it's set up and you're happy, it's best just to leave it there. Um, you can run it at any time and it will bring up that list of what's in the parish, but it will be probably be very similar to what you have on your in-tray, your consultee in-tray, um, in terms of the live applications that you can still comment on in any way. Um, OK, so we'll just go back to the saved search that we had. We'll just run the last one just so that we get the list. I'm going to find an application that's already had comments on um, so that we can show you how to access previous comments as well. 
Um, I'll just find one that's been determined because that's most likely to have had comments. So when you load any planning application or planning related application, you'll get a summary page like this. Um, on this page, it, it basically just tells you what it's for, where it is, the reference number and when it became valid. Once we determine the application, it will say what the decision was and when we issued that decision. If we refuse the application, the applicants do have a right of appeal. If they make an appeal, we, it, the details will then appear here. It will then appear that an appeal is pending. And then once the appeal is decided by the planning inspector, the, date will, the outcome will appear here. We go to further information. This is also quite a key page. It tells you the application type. Once the application is determined, it will tell you whether it was delegated or went to committee. Um, it tells you who the case officer was parish, ward, um, we go to important dates next. This is sort of key dates on the application. So when it was valid and then the target date based upon the government target for us to determine the application. But this date is probably the key one for you. It's the expiry date. And I know it says expiry date, but it means expiry of the consultation date. Unfortunately, we can't change what it's called. The software won't let us. Um, but it is the expiry of the consultation date. This date will automatically adjust if we undertake further consultation. So normally we send out a letter to the neighbour and the parish and the other consultees on the same day. And then the file passes to the case officer and they'll go out and put a site notice up. And in some cases, there's also an advert that goes in the press. Both the press notice and the site notice are usually after we sent the letter out. Those dates go into the system and then the system automatically extends the consultation period to match when the, the 15 working days would expire from the last means of consultation. So either the site notice or the press notice. So you might find this date is a few days after the date that we've given you in the letter. This is the date that's useful to work to, provided we've got the comments by that date, we will be able to consider them in the determination of the application and they can still potentially trigger the referral planning process. Sorry, the referral panel process. Um, if they're received after that date, we will still consider the comments if we haven't determined the application. But in theory, we can determine the application as soon as that consultation period has expired. So it is preferable to get your comments in by the end of that date. Also, if they're received after that date and they're contrary to the view of officers, they don't trigger the referral panel process. It's because of the way the wording is in the constitution. After that date, they don't trigger. So it's that date that you, you need to work to. If you do need a day or two extra because your meeting happens to fall on that day, give the case officer a call. Um, in most cases, we'll be happy to oblige and try and give you those couple of extra days. Um, but obviously we do still need to meet the government targets and therefore we can't extend it. Like if you want a couple of weeks, we're probably not going to be able to say yes to extending the consultation period because it then has a knock on effect in terms of our ability to complete the process by the government target date. OK, so then we'll look at related cases. This just has the addresses that relate to them. In this case, we've got a builder control notice. Um, if there'd been another planning application for something similar on the site, so say this was a revised scheme, um, they're amending the plans or something, we would normally have the planning application appear here and it will appear as a bullet point like these that you can then click on. So you can then load that application and compare the two plans if you wish. Uh, next, we'll move on to accessing the, the plans. So if we click on documents and comments tab and then view associated documents, it then opens a new window. So you've then got the list separate 
so you can go back to that, that information on the application if you want to quite easily. Um, if you want to open a particular document, you click on the, the highlighted reference number for that row. Um, and it, it just loads up. Okay, we don't need that. Uh, similarly, if you wanted to see what comments you'd submitted on this application, or say you were looking at a fresh application on the same site and you'd opened this as a previous application and were looking, you just find the Town and Parish Council response and click on that row, and then it loads. Just close those because we don't need those anymore. Um, don't need those either. In terms of the documents and comments tab, at the beginning of December, running through till about mid-December, you will have two tabs. Um, that is because we are moving our document management system, basically the thing that holds all the plans and things behind the scenes. They're moving over to a new system and we will have a period where they're both running together while we transfer the, the data across. All the new data will be going into the new system from that date onwards anyway. Um, so we have to have a, a slight overlap period while things have been transferred across. Um, so if you've got an application that's around beforehand, you will potentially need to check both tabs. If it's coming before that date, the plans and things should be under the, the current one. But any revised plans or comments that we receive will probably be appear on the second one. And then gradually during that time period, the, the old plans and things will move across to the new one. Um, so you might just need to double check both. As of mid-December, the old system will be switched off and you will just go back to having one tab. Um, it will look a little bit different in that it will load a list that you can filter. So you'll be able to filter. So you just get the plans or you just get the supporting documents or just the comments received, um, which would be quite useful, particularly on the bigger schemes where we have a lot more documents. OK, I'm just going to say so you have to do another type of search. If we go under that map search, this is really useful in terms of allowing you to understand some of the planning history sometimes. I know sometimes we get a revised scheme or we get a scheme and I know I think we've had we've had something similar a couple of doors down. I can't remember what house number it was. What you can do is you can zoom in on the map and it will load all the planning history for you. I've just chosen this one just because it's in another district, really. So just zooming in, um, it first loads, I can zoom out a bit, you can see these red lines. These are where we've had applications in the past six months. If you click on this thing that looks a bit like a funnel, you can um, adjust the time period, so a year, two years, five years, all time. If you turn on all time, you can see you get everything. So sometimes if you know it's in the past year, you might just want to turn on the past year. Um, if we zoom in here, you can see that some of the bits of land have got triangles on as well. These are the older planning histories, consents, applications that were determined, you see, sort of pre some of the stuff being digitised. Um, and then the red lines are the more recent applications where we draw the red lines so it matches what's on the location plan that's submitted. If you've got a site with both, I'd recommend that you click on the triangle because that way you get the cases linked to the triangle and the cases are linked to the, the red outlines. Um, and you get a little window pops up and then you can just use this little arrow to click through them. And you can um, click to, we've got two links here. One will open it in this tab. I'd recommend using the lower one because it opens it in a new tab, which means this map stays where it is. And you can come back and open another application if you want to. Um, so you say you've got two applications, you can then um, open the plans from both and compare them. So just clicked on that and then it just opens the, the details page that we had on the other application. And then you've got the all the, the usual tabs and documents and things.
we go back to, we'll just find a current application. So we're going to consultate in tray or actually if we go to saved search, doesn't matter which way you do this. I'm just, and so you I'll just find one that still looks like it's live. Yeah, because it's got the blue symbol here, it means it's still open for comments. So just click on that one. So you've got these details here. Um, I think in this case, because the it's open for comments, I think that the um, the parish council have made comments because the symbols disappeared up here. If we go back and just find another one. I've obviously done that one as well. <laughs> right. Um, the there'd normally be a blue marker up here with a little speech bubble in it, little blue speech bubble, um, which you can click on to make comments and it basically loads the same window that you can see here and it's best to submit your comments via this in tray really because that way you can see which ones you've still got open and can comment on and you can type into this box or you can write comments in something else and paste them in um it's it's fine either way um i just go on to some tips in terms of comments um, these are just some general tips on the content of comments from town and parish councils. It's really useful if you can be clear whether you're objecting or supporting. If we say no objections, we have to take it's neutral. Um, we do have some comments coming in that say we've got concerns or no objections, but concerns over X, Y and Z. And therefore we're not, it's not particularly clear if they're actually objecting or supporting. And so it can be difficult for us to know if the comments trigger or don't trigger the planning referral panel process. The Town and Parish Council is a consultee, not to determine the application. So the technical term that should be used is object or support, not approving or refusing. It's also really useful if you can explain why the Town and Parish Council has reached its view. It can be useful both in terms of us understanding your your views and how you've reached those views and what matters you've considered because it helps us consider your comments in the determination of the application we do get some that simply say we support no idea why doesn't say or they say they object but and i don't know we don't know why it doesn't say so when we consider the application we're considering it on the the local plan and the neighborhood plan and the mppf and material planning considerations without knowing what which of those the town or parish council has considered it's also really useful to explain why they've reached uh, the town or parish council has reached that view in terms of where if an item triggers the planning referral process when the item goes before the panel they will have consideration of the views of the town or parish council and if they've raised things that the panel considers should be debated in public they can use that to effectively refer the item to planning committee. If the Town and Parish Council views don't say why they've reached that view, the panel's unaware of why they reached that view. If the support or objection is subject to a certain criteria, for example, if they say they support subject to a certain condition being included, it would be really useful if it could be made clear in the comments whether they would still support or if they'd object if that criteria is not met or that condition is not included. Um, because there's often there's cases where we have recommend that they put a condition on X, Y or Z, but we can't actually put the condition on because we have to be very careful in terms of the way that we put conditions on and what they cover and they have to meet the tests that set out in paragraph 56 of the MPPF in that they've got to be necessary, relevant to planning and to the development that's proposed, enforceable, precise and reasonable in all other aspects. We do have examples of where conditions are recommended on things either that aren't on the site or are um, matters that we just can't control through planning. So we can't put the condition on 
and then we're left with the like trying to understand whether the town council or the parish council would still object or support without that condition so in those situations you may well find that the case officer comes back to you and asks you questions and asks you to get clarification in terms of explaining views we yeah, we need to understand what your views are but don't feel you've got to go into pages and pages we just try and keep it brief we just want enough so that we can understand how the town or parish council has reached that view um, you can make reference to planning policy and it, it can be very useful but it isn't essential so don't feel you need to put, put specific policies in every response um, it's really more useful if if you explain what you've considered and what issues you've just uh, you've considered in terms of your recommendation and your comments okay so if you you then put the comments in that box that was that was on the screen uh, once you've finished you can log out or just move on to the next application um we that is it for public access so i will now move on to the CMIS system which is the system for the planning committees um it is a different system so i'm afraid you do need a separate account um so so i should have said we went back to the home page and then we clicked on your council and then your commit and then you click on committees to load this page you can just access committee reports by clicking on the relevant committee and then the date of the meeting that you're interested in and then yeah I'll load a page like this It'll, the document pack is basically all the reports that are going to that meeting including the full agenda or if you're just interested in a particular application you can scroll down and the report for that particular item can just be downloaded we do also upload the slides from our presentations as well. The reports will appear on these pages about a week before the meeting. So we'll just go back to where we started. So this is the, the page you get when you first come into committees. In order to get notifications of when things are going to committee, when things in your parish or ward or or just that the committee is being held um, you'll need an account which you can do by clicking on register and then completing the boxes and submit or if you've already got an account you can log in It looks like it's not done too much because it's just gone blank, um, but it has logged you in because your name appears at the top right. If you then click on my pages and my subscriptions, you can then select which committees you wish to be notified about. If your parish is entirely within the North Committee area, you may just want to click that and not do the South. If you're, uh, and similarly, if you're in the South, you may just want to click South and not North. If your parish is close to the boundary, you might want to do both so that you can see what's going on in the next parish or the nearest town or, or whatever. So it's up to you which ones you select. We do also have a strategic planning committee, which runs quarterly, which we present stats on our performance to, both in terms of planning applications and planning enforcement. And we also provide summaries of planning appeals to those. And then our annual report to that committee, which is sort of June, July time usually, we do do more detailed statistics on our overall performance in terms of proportions that are dismissed on appeal, proportions in time, so that means within the government targets, um, number of enforcement cases, number of overall planning applications, et cetera. Um, so you might want to sign up for those as well but you don't have to the other once you've selected those you just hit save changes and it yeah it remembers um the other way to do it is to set it up by ward unfortunately set up by ward not by parish so you'd need to know which ward you're in and then you'll be notified of everything in that 
that word similarly to above, you can just click and then save changes. Um, and then there's topics here, which doesn't seem to do anything. I'm afraid. Um, but that's all you need to do. And then you will get email alerts for the planning committees. That's everything. Thank you for listening and I hope it's of help.